Hello everyone. In the last session, we discussed adjustments or adjusting entries in general. In this session, we will focus specifically on one type of adjusting entries, and that is prepaid expenses or deferred expenses. It's one of four types of adjusting entries. So let's understand real quick, what is a prepaid? A prepaid is an asset. The prepaid expense is initially recorded as an asset. Over time, as the benefit of this asset is consumed or expired or used up, it turned into an expense. So remember, it's an asset and eventually it turns into an expense. And all assets eventually turns into an expense. It's very important that in some textbook or in advanced accounting courses or on the CPA exam, they might show you the expense first and you have to back out the expense into a prepaid. So any unexpired expense, expense that hasn't been expired, you have to turn it back into a prepaid. This is a topic that's discussed in intermediate accounting and more advanced accounting. The proper method is what we will show you today. It's a prepaid asset, prepaid expense, which is the same thing, then it's consumed into an expense, gradually becomes an expense. Let's go ahead and dive into prepaid adjustments or prepaid expenses. And at the end, we'll work a multiple choice question. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. So this is the trial balance that we prepared in the prior session. In case you're wondering where these numbers are coming from, you can view the prior session and we analyze and record the transaction to arrive to all these balances. So for the purpose of the session, we are going to adjust the prepaid expenses. Let's review real quick what are prepaid before we adjust them. Prepaid is when a company pays for an expense in advance. It records the payment as a prepaid, which is an asset rather than an immediate expense. And the reason we do this, it's because when we pay for this item, the benefit from this payment will be realized it means we enjoy it in the future. So for now, we are buying something that's gonna generate future benefit. We call it prepaid. So when we purchase a prepaid, we debit the prepaid and we usually credit cash or credit accounts payable because if we don't pay it for it now, we have to pay for it later. A prepaid also called deferred expense. The prepaid or deferred adjustments involve accounting for expenses that have been paid in advance and need to be recognized over time as they are incurred. So what's gonna happen is this. First, we have a prepaid. That's the first thing, we establish a prepaid. Then eventually, this prepaid will go down. As this prepaid will go down, an expense will go up, and we'll see this on the next slide. But the initial recording of the prepaid would look something like this. We debit a prepaid, we increase an asset, and we reduce cash or we increase a liability. Let's just keep it cash to make it easy. Then we reduce cash. This is how a prepaid is initially recorded, created, put on the books. Next, we're gonna get to the expense recognition over time, as I mentioned. As the prepaid is used or the benefit is received. So for example, if we have prepaid insurance, as time goes by, the insurance is expired. If we prepay for rent, as time goes by, the prepaid rent is consumed. Now, that, that this process, it's need to be recognized as an expense. What does that mean? It means as time goes by, we need to adjust, we need to reduce the prepaid. And when we reduce the prepaid, it gets expensed. We need to expense the related expense. So we're gonna debit an expense, credit a prepaid. So this is the adjustment 
This is the adjustment for prepaid. So if we are dealing with insurance expense, we debit insurance expense, we credit insure, prepaid insurance. If we're dealing with rent, we will debit rent expense, we credit prepaid rent. Whatever account we are, expense we are debiting, we create the related prepaid. So the best way to illustrate this is to do what? Is to actually work in example. So this is the trial balance and specifically I'm going to zoom in on this prepaid. So what's going to happen is this. The business will give you a trial balance. In one of the accounts they might have a prepaid. And you would ask the, the manager, the uh, uh, the people in charge of the company, I see you have 3,600 of prepaid that you purchased on December 1st. Can I look at the policy to see what's the situation with this policy? And when you review the policy, it looks like you paid 3,600 3, for 36 months that was on December 1st. And this is why you have in the prepaid insurance 3,600. Ask yourself, by the end of the accounting period, by December 31st, is this the correct amount? And the answer is no, it's not. How much should the balance be? Well, let's think about it. If I paid 3,600 for a policy that's gonna last me 36 months, I'm gonna expense $100 per month. What does that mean? It means I need to reduce my prepaid insurance by 100, therefore my balance should be 3,500. So the 3,500 is my balance. I need to reduce my prepaid for 100. Well, when I reduce it, what do I need to do? I need to expense it. So I'm going to credit prepaid and debit, debit insurance expense. Now my insurance expense is 100. So what happened is this. If this adjustment is not made, so what's going to happen if this adjustment was not made? When I say not made. It means if we don't credit prepaid and we don't debit insurance expense. If this adjustment is not made, assets, the prepaid would be overreported. The asset will show as 3,600. They will be overstated. But the assets should be 3,500. And expenses, expenses would have been underreported because without this entry, our insurance expense would have been zero. But in reality, insurance for that month is $100. Therefore, we have a balance sheet account that's affected, which is the prepaid, and we have an income statement. And in all adjusting entries, always we will have a balance sheet account and an income statement. So the entry will be debit insurance expense, we debited insurance expense, and we credited prepaid insurance, we credited prepaid insurance for 100 now let me show you the balances, what, it, what, what would it look like on the worksheet. So this is the trial balance. What's going to happen, you're going to see eventually a 10 column uh, worksheet and this is prepaid and we are going to make an adjustment. We're going to credit prepaid 100, therefore the adjusted balance for prepaid is a debit 3,500. So this is the correct balance. We went from the unadjusted to the adjusted balance. Also, insurance expense was zero. We debited insurance 100. Therefore, the adjusted insurance expense, the balance is 100. So it's very important that you understand the columns because in the real world, companies use either an Excel column or a column or a 10 column trial balance or a worksheet that shows you all the adjustments, all the balances in one place. Very important to be familiar. And eventually we're going to look at the full picture. I'm going to show you these adjustments one at a time. So it's less intimidating when you look at the long, at the big pictures. Now we are done with supplies. Now we look, I'm sorry, we are done with prepaid. Let's look at supplies. We look at the supplies account and we notice that the company has right now 7,300 worth of supplies. Now, how did we acquire these supplies? If you go back to the prior session, we made purchases and we purchased supplies 7,300. Now, obviously the prepaid, this is not the adjusted. This is the unadjusted. I'm still working with the unadjusted just in case you're wondering why this number should not be 3,500. Just we're going to look at the final one at the end, at the end of the recordings. 
So let's go back to supplies, 7,300. What happened is this, you ask the manager, you ask the people in charge, is this how much supplies you have? They're gonna say, we're not sure. You'll tell them, count the supplies and tell me how much supplies you have left. Well, the manager and the staff, they have two counts and they counted the supplies and they find out unused supplies, according to the count is 5,000. So the balance now is 7,300 but the balance should be 5,000. So the balance should be 5,000. So this supplies account is should not be 7,300. This should be 5,000. Well, if it should be 5,000, what does that mean? It means you need, to, you need to reduce your supplies by 2,300. You need to expense supplies, expense or reduce supplies by 2,300. Therefore, I am going to credit supplies. So this is part of the adjustment. If I credit supplies 2,300, I will end up with a balance of 5,000, which is which matches my count. Now for every credit, I need a debit. What do I need to do? I need to expense it. Therefore, I am going to expense. I'm going to debit. So I credited supplies. I debit supplies expense 2,300. So this is the adjusting entry. What happens if this adjusting entry was not made? Same concept. If this adjusting entry was not made, my supplies would have been reported at 7,300, which is incorrect. And my expenses, my supplies expenses will be zero, which is incorrect. Therefore, I needed to report only 5,000 of supplies and an additional 2,300 of expenses. Remember, every adjustment will affect the balance sheet and an income statement. And this is the journal entry. I debit supplies expense. It means I increase supplies expense and I reduce supplies, which is an asset. I reduce supplies. So this is the adjusting entry. So let me show you what it would look like under the 10 column trial balance. Now focusing only on supplies. Supplies was 7,300. We credited supplies under adjustments 2,300. Now the balance, the debited adjusted balance is 5,000. Now notice, you know, I did not include the prepaid, so I don't, I'm working on one account at a time. Then I have to add supplies expense. I debited supplies expense 2,300. The adjusted balance for supplies now is 2,300. Now remember, if you wanna carry down the other accounts, I have the, the prepaid adjusted balance is 3,500 and I have insurance expense of 100. But again, I'm showing you one entry at a time to keep it as simple as possible for you. So this is what we did. Just kind of wrap it up for a second is we adjusted this account prepaid and we adjusted supplies. So the prepaid is supposed to be 3,500 supplies supposed to be 5,000. This is what we did. And we have two other expenses, but don't worry. We are going to look at the final balances when we look at the 10 column. In the next session, what I would do, I will adjust or I make adjustment to, to the equipment, <coughs> to the equipment account. The equipment account is technically a form of prepaid, like prepaid insurance, like supplies, but it's a little bit special. We'll talk about this in the next session. However, let's go ahead and look at the multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. On August 1st, Danny Sports Village paid 4,300 for a three month rent contract for their sport facilities beginning on the same date. The journal entry to record the corresponding adjusting entry on August 31st. So they paid 4,800 for three months. It means for each month, the cost is 1,600. At the end of August 1st, what's gonna happen? Well, let me show you the T account. We have a prepaid rent of 4,800. And what's gonna happen a month later, we have to reduce it by 1,000 and the prepaid rent becomes rent expense. Therefore, we need to reduce prepaid rent 1,600 and increase rent expense 1,600. So now what I want you to do is to be careful what the questions could be. They could have asked you, what is the balance of prepaid by this date, August 31st? The balance is 3,200. The balance means the company still have 
prepaid that they prepaid for two months which, which is worth 3600 but the entry will be a debit to rent expense and a credit to prepaid for 1600 so we're gonna credit prepaid and we're gonna debit rent expense I would say that's the correct answer you could look at the other answers a debit to rent expense and a credit to cash no August 31st there is no cash involved by August 31st a debit to prepaid rent and a credit to cash 4800 well this is the entry to initially acquire the prepaid but that's not the question the question is what's gonna happen a month later a debit to unearned rent there's no unearned rent and credit to cash we did not pay any cash uh, on August 31st there's no unearned rent that's we'll talk about unearned down the road what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional lectures multiple choice questions that's gonna help you with your financial accounting course with your CPA exam preparation with your CMA exam preparation with your professional development invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe